Hi there, hope you're having a lovely day so far. Well, there's no doubt that everyone throughout the world is connected through one common thread at the moment, and that's the thread of contracting COVID-19 and what it means for your loved ones. Well, irrespective of you know what continent you're on or which country you live in, we're all connected through the same challenges and obstacles of social isolation. And despite that here in Australia, that we are starting to open up the opportunity to sort of get out and about and get our lives back to normal, there are still going to be um, quite a few people that are choosing to stay indoors and stay sort of isolated from the wider community to keep themselves safe purely just because at the moment we still don't have a vaccine. You know, and as human beings, we are a tribal species um, and we do need to be connected with each other through the sense of kinship and social bonding. So, you know, really on the flip side of this, when we are disconnected, um, as, as we have been over um, the last sort of um, months, um, you know, we fall into negative emotions such as depression, frustration in and irritabilities, as we all know, and we've all been there at some point in our life. So, you know, that said communication um, during this phase um, that we are in at the moment is really important um, more now than ever. So to help talk to us about this, we're joined by our special guest, Trish Corbett. Now she's author of How to Raise Kids with in Integrity for Parents, Childcare Educators and Teachers. And she's also the founder of Ethical Foundations, Helping Raise um, Your Kids with Integrity. Thank you for joining us today, Trish. How are you? Good, thanks, Rachel. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. I'm really excited to be talking to you. This is our first chat, so welcome. Um, Thank you. Now, there's lots to talk about, um, and I've just got so many questions that I, I want to ask you, so we'll just get stuck straight into it. Um, but, you know, the current COVID-19 pandemic um, seems to have provided... Everybody, from a retrospect perspective, because we are in that phase now that we are starting to move into more sort of normality, getting the chance to be able to get out and about, and we're phasing back into normal life. So as we look back over the last few months, um, it's really given us the opportunity to re-evaluate um, you know, our personal values and reassess what and who is most important to us. Um, it's almost like humanity has had the opportunity to to hit the reset button um, and I'd love to know your thoughts on this what, what do you think I definitely agree I think humanity has uh, hit the reset button it's given time, people time to evaluate what's important in their life and get their priorities straight like some people obviously finances is something that a lot of people need to get into order because that's you know, to have that nest egg that people we, we talk about, we were, and we've heard about so much that we should do, but how many people have actually done it? I, I did read a article, somebody had uh, written a thank you to Scott Papp, the author of Barefoot Investor, and they've said they're thankful that they've read his book because that's helped them set up. So it, it's just getting priorities in order and understanding what's important to people, the relationships and, you know, obviously finances because it's hit people, you know, unexpectedly. Yes. No one saw this coming. That's for sure. <laughs> well, um, I wanted to ask you, you know, why do you think um, this particular point in time, um, you know, and given that it's taken a pandemic to bring out the kindness, the kindness in people, why do you think we've actually needed something as big and as bold and as scary as this to actually have people change the way that they see and treat other people? There's always kind people. Whenever we've gone through challenges before in Australia, we've gone through a lot. We've, we've had the drought for a long time and there's been the truck drivers delivering hay uh, out to the farmers and the farmers have been, while people are aware of them, they haven't probably been as top of mind. Mm. Um, it, it just took so long for, it, for people to realise the struggle that farmers were going through. Then we had the fires, which went throughout Australia were affected. And, and now we've got, you know, the flu, but it's not the flu, it's, it's the pandemic, which has never happened in the lifetime of anybody living. So... It's made people more aware. And what I like is it's made people aware of the, the everyday hero as such, the people who are doing the hard jobs, the people in emergency services, um, you know, back to the fires. 
you know, the emergency services there. Now the emergency services with the the doctors and nurses, the administration. So, and, and the everyday shopping assistant, you know, at Woolworths, Coles, Aldi's, throughout, throughout the um, shopping centres. So it's made people more aware of the essentials and the people who have put their lives at risk because they're, you know, they're having to deal with the public on an everyday basis. Mm -hmm. I think people have definitely reassessed as, as you mentioned, the people that really do make a difference in, in our society um, yeah. overall. So, so are you saying that people before the pandemic were less kind to each other or not? Um, I, what are your thoughts on that? I think that there, as I said, there are people who are always kind. What I, I believe is that people were so busy and stressful and now it's hit the reset buttons for so many people individually and hopefully businesses will, you know, can be, some businesses can be done differently now because I did hear a nurse say that people are actually coming to emergency for emergency reasons, not for everyday issues that they could see a doctor for. That's interesting. Um, business, yeah, so businesses are working differently. So businesses who had no technology, teachers, um, physiotherapists who are doing telehealth so they're going to continue to implement those but those people didn't have any technology skills before right. they didn't yep. or some of them didn't you know yeah, like yeah, they didn't have to with their job yes. but they have now so businesses will react differently and people have industries have discovered that people can work from home so when people can from work from home they can take time out to go for a walk or or they're less stressed because they don't have the travel time. So working from home, so there's maybe more of a work-life balance that hopefully will be the end result for everybody. Yeah, definitely. Um, now, just going back to, I guess, um, kindness being something that um, definitely sort of has helped a lot of people get through this, this time. Do you have any practical tips on how to show kindness and what people can do to get their kids involved um, and what, sort of activities would you suggest um, that, that parents to sort of get their kids involved to teach them this virtue? A great question is how. So when people notice a problem and think, how can I solve that? How can I overcome that? Asking or, or what, what can we do about that? You know, asking children, they're very um, insightful because children have been doing amazing things throughout the world with, you know, just doing things that people wouldn't think of, but children have thought of, and they've got great big massive impacts. And all you have to do is look on social media to find, find that. But just uh, kids actually know the answers. You could turn around and ask, you know, what do you think you could do to help such and such? What do you think they would like? Um, how could we help them? And they're actually got the answers within them. And so you're helping them discover their, their gifts, um, their characteristic gifts. And because they're very thoughtful, they're very considerate, they've just got to be asked how to go about it. You know, yeah, what do you I think, think we could do? They, 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 they come from that place of just pure love and innocence and they don't, they don't have all the layers <laughs> that life sort of puts onto them. So they do see life the way that it should be seen through, from, from that pure love um, and that lens. So I think you're absolutely right from that perspective. So, just, so you're saying just to ask kids, what can we, we do in this instance? And they, they will naturally see and, 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 and communicate that from, from that point of view. Is that what you're saying? Yes, what and how. Just use what and how. Ask them what can we do, how can we do it. Um, and that way they get to problem solve as well. They think they're very um, innovative. Yep. yep. And so are we. So are we. Yes. And that's just the thing sometimes too that we, we, we sometimes forget um, when we do have the layers of stress and everything else that we sort of have life put on us. It's a matter of just taking those off and actually getting back to who, who we actually are um, underneath all of that stuff. Well, that negativity that sometimes life can sort of, you know, 
have us sort of <laughs> carry on our shoulders. Now, we've published your article titled Communication in Isolation. For someone who hasn't read the article, can you give us a little bit of an overview and tell us what inspired you to write it? Oh, because I suppose I, I noticed throughout this pandemic that there were three characteristics because I, I do a blog on characteristics each week, but there is a, a three characteristics that really shone through. And that was kindness, creativity and humour, because I believe that when people are kind to each other, it allows us to be more of the, the real us. And that's, you know, so when we're not stressed, the real us comes out more. Yes. Um, and when we're stressed, the real us also comes out because we are stressed and we might snap. But, but when people are being kind and they're being accepting of each other and they're actually, you feel supported and that you've got somebody's back and other people have got yours, it makes such a difference. Yeah. And kindness is, you know, people are being thoughtful and considerate. I think the, the ageing population are getting more people doing, th doing kind things. They're not just in their homes and I've seen people go up to windows, you know, on TV, go up to windows and, and do a, a creative, you know, play guitar or be a clown or, or do something like that to, to engage, yes, to engage with them, to bring some joy to their lives. And that's been great for, for everybody involved. Yeah. It always is, you know, when you serve, you actually benefit a lot mm -hmm. and kindness, you know, people just being kind to each other and, and the creativity, like in Australia, there's that um, taking the bins out, everybody dressing up. That's really creative. Who would have ever, you know, who would think of that? But somebody has. And so many people have taken it on board because, you know, taking the bin out is, is part of an outing every, for the week. Yes, everyday life. Yep. yep. Everyday life. So, and it's everyday life. So, so creative, which that brings humour as well. Mm -hmm. And you know, looking at things in humorous ways is you know and, and just thinking of the fun about it, the benefits because it's that mindset mindset is everything mm -hmm. and you have to have that the the positive mindset through times like like this because some people find it challenging and others others don't so the three main characteristic traits that you've seen um that's actually helped support get people through this time. Just to clarify, those three are um, a kindness. Um, the second one is creativity and the, and the third one is humor. Is that right? Yes, correct. Yeah. They've been, you know, they're, they're the ones that have shone through to me. Yeah. And is there any like connection be between the three traits at all or not? Uh, well, they're all character traits and, character traits you know we've all got character traits are you know some people call them virtues um they i call them characteristics because they're all within every one of us and and some of them you know there's heaps of characteristics and we've got them all within us and it's just this is what i i feel is the the foundation for getting to know yourself and getting to become self-aware because when you're self-aware you're more confident in who you are, who you want to be. And it, it helps build, when you practice a characteristic on a frequent basis, it builds resilience for times like this. You know that, okay, you know, I have to be obedient, go with the flow with what the government's saying, stay indoors, you know, beware of social distancing. And, and whenever you practice one characteristic, you practice more than one. So, so kindness that's being thoughtful and considerate at the same time uh there's there's unity that comes around as a result of that there's the obedience that comes with the pandemic the tolerance you know it is something that we have to be patient with we have to be yes. <clears throat> um, tolerant with so you know self-discipline with you know you might feel like doing something but you think oh i can't i can't like i can't go and visit my grandkids because you know, I want to do the right thing. The last thing I want to do is make them sick. So self, I practice self-discipline um, before we had to, because I, you know, you could see it coming with what was happening overseas. And Australia has been so, so lucky. We are the lucky country. We are. We really are. So, 
And, you know, talking about communication again, um, you know, so many people I've spoken, spoken to recently have said that thank goodness that we have technology um, and um, given, I guess, the global pandemic that, that this has actually happened during this time um, and, and no, not, not before. And social media, I guess, you know, love it or hate it, has really helped um, a lot of people during this time and it's allowed us um, to communicate freely with friends and family. Um, and, and just online socialising in, in general. Um, however, as a question, do you see that this time of social isolation that we've had and, in, and people are still going to choose, um, and rightfully so, um, as we are sort of phasing out, but we are going to be in the winter months and there is more um, sort of, uh, you know, chance, I guess, this virus doesn't like heat. Um, it, it, it does sort of like sort of cooler temperatures. So there is a possibility. Um, and, and, and we all cross our fingers that there isn't going to be, I guess, a second wave. But as people are going to continue, I guess, sort of keeping themselves in isolation, um, I guess, you know, communication through technology is going to become even more sort of um, sort of required throughout these winter months. Now, I just wanted to ask um, in general, do you think that this, um, I guess, social, um, like socialising through through technology has actually helped build quality relationships during this time? Um, do, I'd love to know your thoughts on that um, and, and just your thoughts overall on social media. Yes, I believe people are using technology more for the essentials like it's back to the foundations of what we need to use it for we're using it for work purposes some mm -hmm. people who never thought they would have to use technology in their working life like school teachers uh how much do we appreciate them right now school teachers and like physiotherapists they're they're hands-on they've never thought that they've had to use technology but now I know of physiotherapists who are using telehealth so they're doing online consulting you know when when possible and the school teachers have you know like it's amazing how quickly they've the education department has got that up and happening and so using technology is but I feel that it's been used wisely more wisely because there's so many people that you know people are looking at their screens and you can go anywhere and you'd look around and you'd see people having coffee together but everybody's looking at their phones and you, you just sort of wonder whereas I think there's only so much that you screen time that people want but now people are going for walks they're doing things as their family the TikTok family things that you've seen families do yes yep all, so it's basically being used for the, the purposes it was intended for is that, is well, that what you're saying well i i don't know why it was intended for but yeah i feel that there is there's it's more being used more wisely and more productively because i know with zoom i kept in contact with my uh father my mum's past but my father and my siblings we would have um sunday afternoon zoom zoom so there'd be five children and and dad and we just have zoom meetings mm -hmm. Even though we all live close by, we just couldn't see each other because we just felt it was it was you know we want to keep dad safe. We've just lost mum, so we want to keep dad safe, and and Zoom was the best way to do that. Yeah. So it, yeah. And um, I guess um, social isolation has highlighted. Um, this is bringing back something that you mentioned earlier on in the chat, um, but a big gap with those who who don't use it, and that being the elderly. And um, in general, being one major group that um, has largely not received, I guess, the same amount of attention as before. Um, so, I mean, I'd love to know your thoughts, um, I guess, on talking about communication um, and everything else as well. Like, what are your thoughts on, I guess, how um, all of the grandparents are sort of feeling at the moment? No doubt, as, as we are opening up the opportunity for, for them to be able to see their, their grandkids again, this is a wonderful thing. Um, but in general, do you think this is something that, that they've really struggled with um, uh, over the, like the last few months? Yeah, I, I would, I suspect that it's been hard on both because obviously grandparents want to see the grandchildren and grand I know I've been FaceTiming my grandchildren. Um, one of them's too young to, to understand it. He's under one, but the, and I hardly feel like I know him because I haven't seen him very much because <laughs> of this, but, um, and that's another reason I've stayed away because he is so young. Whereas the others, um, 
you know, it's been great FaceTiming them, which is not something I've done before with them because I see them. So I think, and I know so many grandparents are now looking forward to, to seeing the grandkids and, and I would suspect the grandkids, you know, are very keen to see the grandparents because that support, that family support hasn't been there for the, for the, to provide to the parents of the, the children as much. And so they, you know, I think everybody would hopefully be a bit more appreciative of each other and, and what we all do for each other. Mm. Now, going back to what you're saying before about the three traits that you've mentioned um, have sort of been quite predominant um, throughout the, I guess, the, the, the last few months. Um, I'd love to know from your, from your perspective um, and speaking about creativity now, um, but, you know, how do you think people can actually discover their creativity um, during this time um, as we are sort of going to you know, continue sort of sort of um, for a lot of people being sort of self-isolated. So for people that maybe are not creative um, minded, but they, you know, it is something they, they, they're interested in doing. What are your thoughts on that then? How can they discover their own creativity? Well, creativity, that's, it's not been a favorite word of mine. It's not something I've ever considered myself to be. However, I am very passionate about ideas. So ideas are also a creation because it was, you know, I've discovered what I think or is the nine essential areas that parents I'd like to know before I, you know, if I was becoming a parent. So it's what I wish I knew. So I've never thought of myself as creative yet. I've written a book. So people would call that creative and, and to come up with those the ideas of that I put in the book um, and the big picture that I see, because my book's about big picture parenting. It's not the small everyday stuff. So it's what I wish I knew or uh, as a, a pregnant person or as a young mother of young children. But so that is creative. So people have ideas. They ha always have ideas of what they think they can do to help the world become a better place, or they're just creative because they're into quilt making or sewing or, you know, being able to, you know, I've got, I know somebody who is interested in uh, creating products that she loves making, sewing, etc. So now she's building a business because she wants to, you know, she wants to make money for herself and not work and become her own boss. So I think people are thinking, what is it I enjoy doing that I could actually make some money from? Mm. And so people are, yeah, that, that is a creative idea. So ideas are creative as well. I, I think just becoming aware of your own gifts is really important. Mm -hmm. And so if people maybe don't know what their own gifts are and their own talents are, I guess from that perspective, where do people start? Um, as you were just saying, like your friend is sort of now looking at sort of starting a business because that's something that she's passionate in. Is, is that the key? Is, is the key just sort of saying, okay, great, I'm, I'm really quite passionate about, about this. This is something that I, I may want to sort of take further. Um, and as we get to the other end of, of um, I guess, you know, sort of and coming out of, um, I guess, the, the dark tunnel that we have actually been in the last few months, um, is, is this what you're saying that people should be doing? They should be thinking, this is what I'm passionate about um, and should I should, should maybe sort of pursue this as sort of like, a side hobby or something like that and maybe even take it further and actually open up a business doing that that particular thing yeah F firstly um i'm uncomfortable with the word should uh so what people could do is i believe getting to know yourself is the most important thing because when you get to know yourself you know who you are who you want to be and and you work your way to becoming because life's a journey not a destination as we say as the yep. saying goes and the other thing is if people look at what they enjoyed doing as a child like there's no way i would have thought that um you know but you don't some people i could tell that um somebody i knew i know is is she loves animals and i could see her as a vet um maybe i put you know, I could always see her working with animals and she's actually doing that. So it's what, what, ask your parent, ask, you know, what was it you enjoyed or think about what you enjoyed as a child because people, what they enjoy as a child is often, you know, can come through in adult life. And if you can get paid for what you love doing, you got it made. But like, there's no way that I would have thought that, um, 
you know, that I would ever write a book. That wasn't something that was on my agenda. It's just because I'm passionate about making the world, you know, helping kids and getting rid of bullying, anxiety, suicide, you know, um, teenage suicides, etc. So I'm passionate about that. So it's what people are passionate about, what they value. Um, and just think, what can I do? How can I, you know, what, what can I do to, to help this situation? Mm-hmm. And, so do you, you know, think- what did I enjoy? So do you think on the other side of this that there will be, I guess, a shift in behaviours um, and, and what people are, are going to decide to do with themselves um, and or do you think that, that largely the majority of people will sort of stay the same? What are your thoughts on that? I believe everybody changes on a daily basis. Like, you know, we grow physically. That There's also the intellectual and the emotional and spiritual sides of us that, that grow and develop as well and everything goes up and down nothing stays the same so it's up to us whether we want to strengthen um, those areas or or not so I believe that people do change consistently whether you know because change is something that happens every day it's just that people don't like change but it's funny because it's ironic because it happens all the time because once you've got a piece of information you can't not know it or you can't unsee things so we've experienced this so we can't unexperience it i just hope that people do want to be more thoughtful kind and aware of how they're feeling and know when i'm not in a good mood today or i've not had good sleep i'm a bit snappy so i have to just be be a bit mindful of that or you know, just to thank the the checkout chick as they go through the checkout or, or the guy, you know, just to... Shift I remember positive some, yeah, behaviours. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. So, yeah. And I remember, another question uh, I wanted to ask as well, I guess the perception over the last few years um, was that, you know, a lot of people are far too dependent on their uh, electronic devices, being their phones and what have you. Um, but it's sort of a little ironic that these devices have helped us um, get through the last few months um, and allowed us to communicate with loved ones. Um, so I just love to know um, largely, like, what are your thoughts on this um, overall? <laughs> yeah. Um, as I said earlier, I, I believe that um, people who weren't techie at all have become techie. Um, I, we're using it more wisely. I think people can, turn around and you know it, it, it will change things uh where we're more open to being able to apply the devices the technology in more practical ways that help us connect with people online at you know who are at a distance and while we've done that we could do that before it's just I suppose understanding our own values and basics, the foundations of what what we we prioritise, and just ensuring that we're doing what um, what's better for us, what serves us. So it doesn't serve us to sit in a computer all day unless you're trying to create doing some work where, where it's your passion to 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 build something in particular. Like mm-hmm. I'm I'm creating currently creating a webinar based on my book, but so unless you're trying to do something like that so use technology but use it wisely use it for a purpose and you know there's no need for us to sit on our our phones all day you know what's been great is that it's got people who weren't techie to become more aware of zoom and you know the world whole world's become more aware of zoom Mm -hmm. yeah and um, lastly, I'd love to know what key lessons do you think that this, this point in time um, will actually teach our children? I think children will remember either parents being helpful, like the, the community services that their parents help were one of the daily heroes, seeing their parents through different eyes, or and spending time with their family. So because they have been home. So there's not rushing here, rushing there, going to an appointment or a, a interest group every afternoon. So having that time, the family time, and, you know, I, I know I've read articles where people have said this has helped my marriage because they've not been so stressed with having to do every day, you know, the everyday run of the mill, groundhog day. 
and it's helped their relationship. Um, you know, I know people who go for walks with their partners a, a lot more. Um, people have family times, they've got games, they've, they're spending a lot more quality time with their families yes. and, and education. So there's a lot of online education happening with them um, because people are, you know, and education is key. Yes. Yep. So if you had any key messages, I guess, for anyone watching or listening this, what would they be? Oh, well, I'm very passionate about characteristics as, you know, with, with my book. And I'm, you know, get to know yourself. And I blog about a, a characteristic a week, a virtual week, for people just to be mindful of. Because when people are mindful of it, they're more confident in themselves. They know themselves. They know who they want to be, who they don't want to be. And when it comes to pandemics or challenging times, any challenging time in your life, then they're more resilient because they, they're comfortable with who they are. And when you're comfortable with who you are, you're you you know yeah you're okay you'll yeah. get through anything well look thanks so much for the chat today trish if anyone's got any questions and or they want to purchase your book or reach you whereabouts can they find you my website is called ethicalfoundations.com.au and my facebook page is trish trish corbett author and life coach so, because life coaching is what I do to help people become more aware and help them um, find their dreams. Thank you so much dreams. for your time today, Trish, and can't wait for the next chat. Take care. Thank you. Bye, Rachel. Bye.